every element has a unique symbol and atomic mass. For example, the symbol and atomic mass of hydrogen are H and 1.008 respectively. In order to accolade scientists and their nations, IUPSC has named some elements either on the basis of scientists' name or by their place of work. For example, four elements are named after Iterbe, a village in Sweden as they are isolated from the rocks found near it. They are Yttrium, Terbium, Erbium and Iterbium. Gallium and Francium are named after France. The ancient name of France was Gaul. Similarly, Einsteinium is named after famous scientist Albert Einstein, who gave the theory of relativity. Nobelium after Alfred Nobel, who invented dynamite and Mendelevium after Mendeleev. Let us study who was Mendeleev and what was his contribution. Mendeleev, a Russian scientist, was a visionary who in 1869 gave a far-sighted version of the classification of elements. Dmitry Ivanovich Mendeleev was born in Tobolsk in Siberia on 8 February 1834. He completed his studies from University of St. Petersburg. At that time, only 63 elements were known. Mendeleev arranged them in the order of increasing atomic masses in the form of a table and the table is known as Mendeleev's periodic table. In his periodic table, he related the atomic masses of the elements with their physical and chemical properties. His main focus was on the oxides and hydrides formed by the elements. But how did he reach to his periodic table? Mendeleev took 63 cards and wrote all details such as name of element, atomic mass, the known physical and chemical properties, the formulae of its hydride and oxide on each card. What next? Mendeleev arranged the elements in the increasing order of their atomic masses in horizontal rows till he encountered an element having properties similar to the first element. He placed this element below the first element which started the second row of elements. Proceeding in this manner, he arranged all the known elements of that time in the form of periodic table. From this, he noticed that there is a periodicity in the properties of elements. On the basis of these similarities, he proposed his periodic law. The law states that when elements are arranged in the order of their increasing atomic masses, the elements with similar properties are repeated after regular intervals. Now here is Mendeleev's periodic table. Let's look carefully and find how it helps in understanding elements in systematic manner. Mendeleev's periodic table has horizontal rows called periods, which are numbered from 1 to 7. It has 8 vertical columns called groups, which are numbered from 1 to 8. Group 1 to 7 are further subdivided into subgroup A and B, based on the differences in their properties. The elements placed on the left-hand side of each group constitute subgroup A, while the elements on the right-hand side of each group constitute subgroup B. Group 8 has 9 transition elements in 3 sets of 3 elements. Notice there are some gaps in his periodic table. He named these yet-to-be-discovered elements using a Sanskrit prefix eka, which means first, and also predicted their properties. For example, eka boron, eka aluminium and eka silicon. Take a look at the position of vanadium and chromium in the periodic table. Have you noticed something unusual from what he stated? Yes, you got it right. Few elements of higher atomic mass are placed before lower atomic mass elements. It means that he placed few elements of higher atomic mass before an element having lower atomic mass in order to adjust elements having similar properties. As we know many scientists have worked on the classification of elements, then why only Mendeleev's work is appreciated? Well, this is so because he was able to classify all the then known elements and gave a new direction for the research to the scientists. Let's identify some more merits of Mendeleev's periodic table. The properties of elements could be studied in a group rather than the individuals. So, his classification was a systematic study of elements. He left gaps at certain places in the periodic table for the elements which were not discovered till that time. He foretold the properties of these elements based on their position. He designated these elements as Eka boron, Eka aluminium and Eka silicon. 
These elements were discovered years later and are now known as candium, gallium, and germanium respectively and their properties were similar to what Mendeleev predicted. He not only predicted new elements, he also corrected the atomic masses of some elements. For example, he corrected the atomic mass of beryllium from 13 to 9. Similarly, he also corrected the atomic masses of indium, gold, platinum, etc. Mendeleev's vision was so clear that when noble gases were discovered, they could be easily accommodated in his periodic table without disturbing the position of existing elements. In spite of having so many advantages, it had a number of disadvantages too. Let us go through them. Hydrogen exhibits the properties of both Group 1A and Group 7A, but still it was placed in Group 1A. So the position of hydrogen was anomalous. Isotopes as we know are the atoms of same element having different atomic mass or atomic weight. Therefore, according to his law, they should be placed in different groups, but he did not provide separate places for the isotopes of an element. For example, hydrogen has three isotopes, namely protium, deuterium and tritium, having one, two and three atomic masses respectively, which should be placed differently, but it was not so. Mendeleev placed elements having higher atomic masses before elements that have lesser atomic mass in order to group the elements having similar physical and chemical properties. This is contrary to his stated periodic law. For example, he placed argon having atomic mass 39.9 before potassium having atomic mass 39.1. Cobalt having atomic mass 58.9 before nickel having atomic mass 58.7 and tellurium having atomic mass 127.6, precedes iodine having atomic mass 126.9. In order to place elements in the increasing order of their atomic masses, he placed dissimilar elements together. These elements have different physical and chemical properties. For example, the inactive coinage metals, copper, silver and gold were placed in group 1b along with the most active metals like lithium, sodium, potassium etc. of group 1a. Due to all these disadvantages, many scientists of that time started searching for a more basic and fundamental way for classifying elements. This search was done for many years and finally led to the modern periodic table which is used till date.